Similar trial area problem. This gives me opportunity to introduce some of my students, 2009-2010 varsity Lincoln High School basketball team. To the left, junior Kerry Sworn. In the center, senior Prentice Richmond. And to my immediate right, District 12-4A sophomore of the year, Courtney Hooper. We're going to look at this problem. Quadrilateral UVWX is shown below. If triangle UYX and triangle VZW are similar, which of the following is closest to the area of triangle VZW? And the first thing I like to do when I see a problem like this is to take a good look at it. We have this smaller triangle here, UVX, UYX, which is similar to this large triangle, VZW. And they have the same proportions, but a different orientation as they are flipped from each other. And so what is being asked? We're being asked the area of this larger triangle. And so we have to ask ourselves, well, what do we need to find the area of this larger triangle? Well, let's look at the formula for the area of a triangle. And here it is below. Area equals one-half base times the height. We have the base but we are still lacking this height. So in algebra sometimes, to label something we don't have the answer to, we assign an unknown, like a variable, to this, which is x. It's actually an unknown, not a variable. But what's going to happen is that this larger triangle has the same proportion of dimensions as the smaller triangle, so we set a proportion x the long leg divided by 6.75 over on this side. And the other side of the equation, we have the long side of leg of the smaller triangle, which is 6, divided by the short leg of the triangle, 4.5. And so the next step in solving this equation is to cross multiply and to bring this 6.75 up over here. And for this, to calculate what that is, we can bring out our calculator, which are virtual TI 83 plus. And we multiply the dimensions here, 6.75 times 6 divided by 4.5. And what do we get for that? We get 9. So is 9 our correct answer? We see answer J is 9. Well, 9 is what we would call a preliminary answer after the first step. It's just this side here. And so the test writer has set you up after a two-step problem to give you a possible answer after the first step. Opportunity to fail on that one. So we're going to go ahead now and apply this formula, 1 half base times height. So we put in 0.5 for 1 half. Then we multiply that times the base, which is 6.75. And then we multiply that times the height we just calculated, which is 9. And we get 30.375. And so we're going to go ahead and choose our answer, H. Now, the thing you have to see here is that the test writer has given you a couple more opportunities. We haven't even encountered to make mistakes. If, in this proportion, you used 7.5 instead of the 6 and put 7.5 here, you would have calculated this answer here, G, 38 centimeters squared. If you had forgotten to divide this formula by 2 and did everything else right, this equation by 2, this expression by 2, you would have picked answer F, 61 centimeter squared. And so this is an opportunity to show you how even a problem this simple, the test writers have kind of set you up to fail. So be careful. Be vigilant. Good luck.